Hello everybody, it's Steve Grizzetti, your man from Movie Picks and author of the MoviePicks.com guide to Adobe Premiere Elements. And here we are in Adobe Premiere Elements in part three of our eight part series called Basic Training for Premiere Elements. Now here in part three, we want to work with and talk about the timeline. And the vast majority of what you're going to be doing as you build your movie is simply adding media to your timeline. Assemble it, you trim it, you cut out what you don't want, and you slice the rest so that it tells a story. That's the basics of editing. And 90% of what you're going to be doing is just assembling things on the timeline. So understanding how the timeline works is going to take you a long way toward understanding why things happen the way they do. In part two, we saw that in advanced view, you add your media first to the project assets panel before adding them to the timeline. So we're gonna gather our media here for our movie and then we'll add it to the timeline. To get our media into our movie, we go over here to the plus button on this toolbar that runs along the left-hand side of the program. And here we have a number of options using the Elements Organizer, getting video from a camcorder, getting it from a still camera. But most of the time, if your video is already on your computer, you're gonna simply go to files and folders and browse to it. Let's select a number of clips and click open and they will be added here to my project assets panel. From here I can drag them down to my timeline. So let's drag a clip down here and you notice as always the very first clip we add will get a warning saying the clip does not match the current project or the current sequence settings. Do we want to change the sequence settings to match the clip? And most of the time I say yes I do. So now my media matches my video and I've got a 16 by nine video here. And so now my project sequence matches my media's file. And so since I work with camcorder video, I'm dealing with a 16 by nine, 1920 by 1080 video. Let's add a couple more clips to the timeline. And then we'll add one to video track two. Now we can zoom in and out of the timeline just by using the plus and minus keys. These are next to the backspace key on your keyboard. Zoom in, zoom out. The backslash key right above your enter or return key will show you your entire movie in one view, but those plus and minus will give you a zoom in and zoom out. Along the left hand side of the timeline, there are a series of shortcut tools and these tools will help you in various manipulations of the timeline. For instance, we've got the track select forward tool and I select a clip on the timeline every clip to the right of it will be selected likewise there is the track backward tool when I select a clip on the timeline every clip to the left of it will be selected on the timeline so it's means of selecting the timeline or clips on the timeline I can also select them with the selection tool one at a time or I can use this little lasso tool at the bottom, the rectangle tool, to just drag over the timeline and select whatever clips I want. Let's click off those to deselect all the clips on the timeline. We've got a ripple edit tool, which I'll demonstrate in just a moment. There's also a rate stretch tool, a text tool for creating titles, a remix tool for remixing your music. We'll talk about those in other tutorials or elsewhere in my book. And there's a scissors tool. When I select my scissors tool and click on a clip on my timeline, it slices right through it so I can remove a section from the middle. Most of the work you're going to be doing, you're going to be doing with the selection tool at the very top of that shortcut bar. And if I select a clip on my timeline and press the delete key on my keyboard, you notice that the clip is removed, but it leaves a gap on the timeline. The timeline does not ripple by default. In other words, these clips don't move by default. Let's control Z or command Z to return that clip. If I select a clip on the timeline and I press the backspace key on the other hand, I delete and ripple. In other words, not only is the clip removed, but all the clips to the right move in to fill out the gap. Likewise, if I were to drag a clip to the timeline and place it between two clips, it's going to actually overwrite those two clips, which is not what I want most of the time. Control Z, Command Z to undo that. If on the other hand, I hold down the control key or the command key on my keyboard and drag a clip down here between two clips, you notice that he ripples the timeline off to the right. It inserts the clip and moves all of the clips to the right out farther to the right so that I can insert my clip. 
So this is called rippling, the way the timeline moves back and forth as you add clips or remove clips from it. If I were to trim a clip, and I do that by hovering over the beginning or end of a clip on the timeline, and I drag in to trim the clip, you notice that it leaves a gap again. Let's Control Z or Command Z to undo that. If on the other hand, I select the ripple edit tool from my shortcut bar and trim my clip, trim a little off the end, you notice that the timeline now moves to fill in that gap. It's rippling closed or rippling open if I were to expand the clip. So again, rippling is a kind of complicated process, but as you understand when it occurs and when it doesn't occur, it gets easier to work with and you understand what's happening as you're assembling your movie. Now, if I were to select a clip on the timeline and press delete to leave a gap, you notice that when I hover my mouse over that gap, I get kind of a, a checkerboard or a grayed out area. If I click on that, I will find the option to delete this gap. So I can manually delete the gap and manually ripple the timeline shut too, or I can do it as a single step process by using the backspace key rather than the delete key. Let's remove this clip that's on track two just by selecting it and then deleting it. And I'm just going to delete and leave a gap in the timeline. We'll leave another gap over here in the timeline. One of the neat new features that were added here in version 2026 of the program is that if I were to select one of these gaps that are left in the timeline by removing clips, or if I just haven't got my clips close enough together as I assemble my timeline, I have the option of either deleting a single gap or deleting all gaps and rippling the entire timeline shut and closing all those gaps. So a little tricky, but those are the basics of rippling and editing. And again, editing is going to be 90% of what you're doing anyway as you're putting together your movie. But if you get a handle on, on rippling, when it occurs, when it doesn't occur, and how to control when it does occur, all of this assembling and all of this editing is going to be a heck of a lot easier. Now coming up in part four, we're going to take a look at transitions and how to add transitions to enhance your movie and to enhance the story that you're trying to tell in part four of our eight-part basic training for Adobe Premiere Elements.